Hi guys, Misty here. Welcome back for another episode of Color Your World with Diamond Painting along with me. I'm going to do a little bit more painting today. So, my husband is doing his first round diamond painting. And going pretty well. Let me just make sure this is focused. Um, I thought it was going pretty well, but, and for the most part it has, um, it's just, he's using wax. And a pen for the first time so he's having a little bit of a hard time with figuring out figuring out how to um, you know get the wax correct and I mean so it's a, it's a whole learning progress for him because he's been using tweezers from day one on the squares that he was working on. And so I thought that he would have a better time with this whole like um, transition to the pen but he's having like he's I don't know what it is he's struggling to use a pen and I don't know why he's using like eight times more wax than I am <laughs> like I'm like what are you doing to the pen that you are like having such a hard time I don't understand um and I thought you know it would be a simpler learning process for him um, because it doesn't it doesn't come difficult to me but I don't know I don't know do you guys have any um, is there a learning curve to using a pen versus using tweezers because I actually don't like the tweezers because um, I have carpal tunnel I think in my hands so after a certain point in time, my hands will start to hurt, but I was getting tired of the, the pink wax not working. So for a while I did change to using tweezers, but I don't know, like I never had any trouble really using the pen, so I'm not fully understanding where he's coming from because like I said, I haven't had any... I haven't had any troubles with it, so um, I'm not sure exactly why he would be having troubles on his side, but I mean, I'm just like, what are you doing? Why are you using so much wax? I don't understand, because, you know, I'm doing sections of diamond painting um, after sections with the, with the wax that we're using, and because we're both using the same wax, which is the, the Diamond Art Club wax that I got with the Rainbow Rose. Um, because I found that it seemed to work better than some of the other pink waxes. So that's what I've been using. Um, I'm wanting to try the Museum Gel, but I haven't bought it yet because it's kind of expensive I think and it's getting mixed reviews some people love it some people hate it just like the pink wax just like the blue poop tag um 
so I don't know if I want to I don't know if I want to spend 10 bucks on something that um, may or may may or may not be working well so because that's kind of expensive an expensive alternative if it's not that great um, people say it's great some people say they used up all of it and they hated it so I'm just kind of waiting to see um, what happens exactly with some of the other people that are posting about it on Facebook groups and whatnot so um, I'm gonna do the first first three rows first to build up Like I typically do. I'm just, you know, kind of waiting to see what the reviews are like for the stuff. Um, but I really am interested in buying it. I just, like I said, I've I've bought many, many things before this, and it's just not. It's like kind of a waste. Like I could have. Bent it on a diamond painting or something. So I just, uh, you know, I like I said, when I spend money, I make sure I spend it on stuff that I'm gonna need or that I'm gonna use. Um, so, oh. No, oh, look, this is charged with you. I'm going to see what happens. It might cut off again. I don't know. But we'll know in the future what should be done. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, I want to be able to pull this top layer up and place it above. That way I can just peel it backwards because I decided that I'm going to work from left to right and then from top to bottom. So I'm going to do as much of this on the side as I can and then I'm going to go down so that I can treat this like a scroll and um, roll it and unroll it as much as I need to. So, and then I have this pool noodle over on this um, left side, so that I can when I wrap when I wrap this side around a pool noodle, I can be able to clip it up because it's going to get heavy with all of the drills on it. So, so, I just need to do that. Shh. Is your brother awake? Tree? Is your brother awake? So, like I said, right now I'm just trying to get the first three rows up. Okay. Don't wake him up, okay? I'm just trying to do the first... The first three rows right now, just to reinforce my perimeter. So that I don't need the card up there anymore. So this is number six. I'm a little skeptical about the color scatter. 
throughout this. But we're going to see how this is going to work out. <laughs> Uh, I'm curious on what you guys are working on. Um, if you want to comment down below, tell me what you're working on, if it's a, um, how big it is. Um, hoping to get more videoing done before my kids woke up, but apparently they decided to wake up in the middle of my video of course so i don't know how much more i will be able to get done past these three rows because my husband is out doing pt right now it's his virtual drill weekend so he is out running his two mile run or whatever however many miles it's supposed to be um so, if the kids get to be too demanding, I will probably have to stop since they're just waking up and they're probably pretty hungry. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um. So, in the picture, well, I guess this part's maybe the sunrise. So that's it for the number sixes in the first three rows. So now I need number seven. These numbers are really hard to read sometimes, um, the symbol anyway. So, okay, I really did not need that much, but. <laughs> okay. I needed a few people. Okay, that's okay. I can always dump them back in. That's what I used tr the tray and the. the containers for to be able to take them out and put them back, take them out and put them back. So, it looks like I'm actually working on four rows here, so I'll just continue with that uh, since the kids are still quiet. Um, so, there hasn't really been anything going on this weekend. Uh, my husband had, like I said, drill. <clears throat> so he's been doing a lot of um, stuff for that. and I haven't really had time to work on my videos and paint and this painting and such, but um, it's a lot harder when he's not home 
because I need him to help out with the kids to keep them occupied, or try anyway. But as you can tell from a lot of my videos, that doesn't always work. Alright, so you might hear my son playing in the background. I finally got him to settle down enough. He wants to show me all of his fruit snacks. <laughs> Um, I'm like, I don't need to see them all. I don't, I know what character, he's actually, my husband decided to buy, um, Marvel character fruit snacks for him this week. And so, um, he's like, I'm eating Thor and I'm eating Iron Man and Black Widow and it's funny. Um, so, it's pretty cute. He doesn't really, he doesn't really watch the movies with us, so, um, he'll go in his room. He likes to watch, um, Incredibles, so he's been watching Incredibles over and over and over again, and I'm like, okay... But, you know, it's cute because he wants to be, he's like, I want to be a superhero. So. Sometimes he'll be like, can I watch it five times today? I'm like, oh God, <laughs> why would you want to watch it five times? And sometimes it's like, I want to watch it five times in a row. Can I watch it five times in a row? And I'm thinking, oh my lord, how could you watch it that many times? But then, you know, my favorite movie is Pride and Prejudice, so I could probably literally watch that movie over and 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 over again, which I have, by the way, I've seen it so many times. And um, it was kind of funny because my husband... He didn't fully understand like what what they were saying when he first watched the movie with me and so I basically had to translate what was being said and my husband's kind of on the sentimental side so um, I mean I look over at my husband after I explained to him each, you know, section, oh, excuse me, each section of the movie and what's happening, because some of the language is pretty, um, pretty hard to understand if you're not used to that kind of, um, way they talked back then, um, but I actually, um, I tried to read the book when I was younger and I really honestly I could not read the book it the words were so hard um so um but I did I did power through it but a lot of the stuff I'm like what are they talking about so when it came to the movie it was much easier for me to understand and I like the um the Kira Knightley one um and so he, I explained to him like what they were saying and stuff. And now he like, whenever he watches it, he starts tearing up. I'm like, oh my God, you know, you're making me like despise the, my favorite movie because you are over here crying. <laughs> like I'm the one that should be crying, not you. Um, but you know. He, he likes the movie now that he understands what the heck they are saying. And it makes, it's funny to me because it makes me laugh every time I see it. Like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Um, so, I still haven't watched the Pride and Prejudice Zombies, I think it is. Like, I, I know a few years ago they were trying to get P. 
people into, I think they wanted to get people to read, read or watch classic, like, talk, like, learn about classic movies. So they were doing this whole, like, vampire zombie phase on them because so many people were, you know, interested in Twilight and stuff that they were trying to get like the new generation interested in these older movies and so I think that's why they came out with um Pride and Prejudice Zombies and I think there was another another classic book that they turned into into a um zombie slash vampire whatever story but I don't remember what it was I thought it might have been Romeo and Juliet but I'm not a hundred percent sure it's just something like I read about and then I never never got a chance to watch the movie I did try to read the book um, but for me, it's really hard to like sit down and read books, especially having, having kids and everything. Cause I just, I, I don't find the time, especially with Diamond P thing now, it's just like books have totally, totally gone unread. Um, and I actually was not an avid reader anyway because I did not start reading books until Twilight came out actually. Uh, I mean, I, I read a few books here and there. Um, but um, I became a big reader for a few years uh, while, like after Twilight, Twilight came out. I... I did not hear anything about Twilight. I didn't know what Twilight was. I didn't know anything before I went to the movie theater. I couldn't find anybody who wanted to go to the movies with me. So I went by myself. And I'm sitting in the theater. Uh, and I'm like, what? When... When Edward starts to sparkle, I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, because I'm a big um, vampire. Like, I love The Lost Boys, Interview with the Vampire. Those are some of my favorite movies. <laughs> so, my first reaction was, what the hell is happening? Why is he sparkling? What the hell? So, I, because like I said, I did not know anything about what was going to happen or anything. But I totally fell in love with the storyline. And I immediately, after leaving the theaters, I went to Walmart and I bought Twilight. And I bought New Moon. And I believe I waited all of a day or two. I think a day or two. And I went and bought Eclipse. Um, because I loved the, the story so much. Uh, the, like I started doing research about it and then fully, like, fully understood what exactly t the Twilight was. And, uh, yeah, I just, like, I read, um... I read each book multiple times. Um, when it was over, I was sad. I wish that um, the author, Stephanie Meyer, I wish she would write more books. I know that um, I know that she's coming out with a um, Edward version of Twilight, which is called Midnight Sun, I think. But, honestly, like, I want to know, I, w I want them to continue the storyline for Renesmee and, um, 
Jacob and like, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and, um, so, I, and I think there's definitely a story there. I just don't know if she will want to continue it. I know that, um, she was writing Midnight Sun, uh, when, I want to say when Twilight came out, um, as a movie, but then, like, I guess, Somebody leaked her, leaked her rough draft of it, and it really upset her to the point where she was like, I'm not going to release it anymore, which I thought was pretty messed up considering that she had many, you know, like, it wasn't the fans' fault that these people leaked her book. Like, the fans are, are what makes your book popular and, and what, you know, like, part of what makes your, your books a success. I mean, obviously, if, um, you didn't have any readers to read your books, then you, you would be basically writing it for yourself. And... So I felt like she was punishing her fans a little bit. Um, but she has since decided to finish writing it and release it, which I think is nice. But like I said, I felt, as a fan, I felt like she was just like um, punishing us for one person's mistake. Like, I feel like she could have maybe done some kind of legal, maybe a legal, um, route to what they did or whatnot. I don't feel like she should have, um, you know, taken it out on, on the fans of this. And, you know, I, I loved it so much. I, I had t-shirts and purses and backpacks and like whatever and like I had all kinds of merchandise from from the series and so for me I was a little bit upset about the fact that she wasn't gonna continue writing the book because of one bad person or whatever and then she did, she ended up posting it online after for everyone to read, um, the parts that were, um, already released, but honestly she could have, um, maybe rewrote some of it or left it as it was and just said, you know, like this, what, what they did was messed up, but I don't want to punish my fans for... So then, so, after that, I started reading other books about vampires and, um, supernatural creatures and blah, blah, blah. Like, cause that's my, that is my favorite stuff, like, um, sci-fi fantasy, which is, um, vampires are my favorite, um, but I, I don't mind werewolves. Uh, I read... I read a lot of books after that, and I, um, started to get into, um, I started to get into listening to audiobooks because, you know, it was easier on my drive to and from work or something like that. I could just, you know, put it on and, and listen, and, um, so I've got a ton of books that were on audio. Um, and I, like, would put on my MP3 player and stuff like that, so, but it was, um, so I, I've actually read all of the Hunger Games books, which I read recently that they are coming out with a prequel to Hunger Games, so they're gonna talk about, I think, um, Snow when he was a child, maybe, and from what I read, uh, some of the synopsis, so 
that I think is going to be um, quite good. And I and I did. Um, I think I read also that they are probably going to be making it a movie. So that'll be interesting to find out why Snow is the way he is and what happened with all of that. Um, I also read, um, I cannot think of the author's name off the top of my head right now, but I read this, um, series about a succubus and I really loved that. I think, no, I think it was by Rochelle Mead. Yeah, I think it was by Rochelle Mead, who also, um, writes for Vampire Academy. So I read, I read Vampire Academy, the, the series. I read that first and then I read the Succubus series from her. And then, um, she was also writing another series of books that I started to kind of, um, like, and she also had a spinoff from Vampire Academy, which I also read most of, I read most of them, I haven't read all of them, I, uh, and, um, there's, like, so many, um, so many books that I read after, uh, like I said, I read all of the the Hunger Games ones, and the reason I read the Hunger Games ones is because my sister was like, you gotta read this book series, and I'm like, okay, uh, because she was reading it with my niece we, for school, and she's like, <laughs> She's like, it made me cry. So I watch, and so I'm, I'm like reading the books, and I'm like, why is she crying? I did not cry over the book until I got to the fourth book. I think it was the fourth book, third book. Sorry, third book. Um, and then I lost it. <laughs> but, um. You know, I read, like I said, I started reading all kinds of different books about vampires and such. So, um, I read, um, I read Marked by PC Cast also. I think her name is PC Cast, something like that. And her daughter... I read all of the, all of that series, and then, I'm trying to think who wrote Mortal Instruments, because I, I, um, I read all of that, or I didn't read all of it, I read Majority, like they, there were other books that were coming out, um, I haven't finished. I still have to finish those books, but I, I read quite a, quite a bit of books after that, and like I said, I was not an avid reader before this, so, um, so I did get to learn about new, new books and new things, you know, before, like, that I would not have generally found because of Twilight so thanks to Stephanie Meyer for that because I was open to reading the book because I wanted to just like understand more of what I was watching in the movie because I fell in love with the movie um so I became a little obsessed with it like when I like something, I get a little obsessive about it. Like, I will watch something over and over. Or, And honestly, 
I'm not 100% sh sure that the movie was the best. Um, but, you know, I think it was good for what it, what it was, you know, like, what it, what it was able to do on the budget that it was at, like, but, you know, I hope that someday it'll be remade into maybe something, um, maybe something a little better, but, I don't know, like, I also, like, really loved Vampire Academy, like, I really wish that the movie would have been a little bit more of a success at the movie theaters, because the book series is so good that it's super unfortunate that, um, that it didn't continue. So I ran out of this color, um, I didn't run out of it, I just, I ran out of what's in the container. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to just skip for right now. Um, so I'm curious to know if you guys have read or watched any of the movies that I've talked about or read any of the books that I've talked about. Um, because, let's see, what was this, number nine? Number nine. You know, my, my family, uh, this was pre my husband. I, I pretty much stopped having time for reading once I met my husband, which, I mean, it's not because I met my husband, it's just, we have other, we do other things other than reading, so, um, you know, he, we watch movies or, or whatnot, and he doesn't mind reading too, I mean, he's read plenty of books as well. I think he's read some of the series that the some of the series that I've read um Hunger Games and such, but um but I just with I also didn't have my two younger kids then, so I had a lot more time on my hands, you know, I had a I want to say if, probably a 13 year old, 14 year old by the time I, um, was doing the reading and, and whatnot, and, oh no, he might have been younger than that, I, I, I don't really recall what year it came out, he's probably eight, about eight, so, you know, I had the, the freedom more to be able to like, okay, I'm going to go read a book and, um, you know, work on your homework or something. And I'm going to read this book while you're working on your homework. If you need help, let me know kind of a thing. Or, um, um, I shared custody with his father. So he was not always in my care. So I had a lot more time to read um, and whatnot, so. But, you know, like, prior to that, I was, like, a big moviegoer. I, I watch movies all the time. So, I don't want that. Take it, but I don't want it. I was a big moviegoer, but... Like, I would not, I would not read. <laughs> if I had to, if I had to read anything in school, I would buy, like, a, a Cliff Notes version. I would never read. But, yeah, 
I just, I still, I feel like I don't really still have the time really to sit down and read a book. And then I have to do audiobook if I do anything. should be walking through the door soon, but I don't know how long. Oops. I don't know if this is sticky enough, but I feel like I feel like the diamonds are popping up whenever I add a diamond, so but I'm not sure why. I just hope that this painting is not going to be a popping drill mess because I'm already dealing with the popping drill mess with the hooikins that I'm still working on. Like right now, I'm working on a 60 by 60 hooikin. That is a popping drill mess. And I, I just, I don't, I just want a nice canvas that has no freaking issues. And it seems like it's a hard ask. But I really, like, I really don't have, like, $50, $60 to spend on a small canvas. From, like, Diamond Art Club. And I definitely can't say Dreamer Designs because they had a lot of trash in their drills. So, but I just, I, it could be because of the, the purple having like, I say a skirt on some of them because it's like it go, it like, it, it wraps around the full drill. And so I don't know if that has something to do with what's going on here or not. I just keep having technical difficulties. I guess that's like the story of my life here. But So our um, kids' school emailed us a survey and said that they're going to start in-person um, in person classes again for the fall. Um, but they also are saying that they have um, set up access for virtual classes for kids that are not comfortable with returning to school 
But they're only doing that for kindergarten through um, eighth grade. So that school goes to K through eighth. And so part of me is like, yeah, I think they need to go full time. My kids anyway, because, you know, they have, um, they have speech delays and you know, whatnot. So they need the extra time at school, I think. And, um, virtual school has not been doing anything for them in my opinion. So I feel like, but I also don't want them to get sick for obvious reasons, but, um, also because I am possibly diabetic, so I don't want to take the risk, but then I also want to make sure that my kids get what they need from school. So that part's a little frustrating um, to deal with because I, it's like a catch-22 pretty much in my opinion because it's like, um, it's like enough, uh, and, and also since they don't offer that, um, for kids that are in preschool, um, so the preschool kids have to attend, they don't have the option to do it virtually this, this year. They did last year, um, because of this whole, like, you know, surprise thing, like it was a surprise. So, um, so they were doing a virtual class for, for that. But I think they got enough feedback to know that it wasn't working out. So I think they decided that they were not going to continue with that. So it just really sucks though because um, my three-year-old has to go to school. where my five-year-old has the option to do it virtually, but they both actually need in-person instruction because that's what's better for their, their learning abilities. So I'm just worried about them getting sick. And it's done, it seems like whenever there was an illness going around. My son ended up with it. And like it seemed like these parents were sending their kids to school sick. And they didn't care if the kids got the rest of the kids sick or, or whatnot. So it was frustrating because I would, I would keep my son home even if he had just like a cold. Like, I'm trying not to continue the cycle, um, whereas parents are probably like, I have to work. I can't just call off of work because my kid has a, a cold, whereas I'm able to do that. But it was just, it's, it kind of sucks, so... Bye guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more diamond painting content.